Hello everyone. Welcome to software testing help. In this session, we will be discussing about page object model in Selenium web driver. So this is the continuation of the previous session and the approach is without using page factory. So in the last session, we were discussing about how to structure a basic page object model design pattern. Uh, so in this uh, session, I will be showing some more concepts with a few more examples in using page object model pattern. So let's get started. So here we'll be starting with this application pinterest.com and I have few test cases already scripted for this. So we'll see how we are going to handle uh, page object model design pattern for these test cases. Let's start the first test case. Which says verification of successful login. So for this you know you have to enter valid username password and then click on continue button and my validation part is to verify whether I have a login button in search results page. So let me show it to you manually this test case. So this is my login page. Uh, so I'm entering username password and clicking on login button. This age parameter is just mandatory. Sorry. It's just optional. So here I need to verify whether I have a logout link in the search results page. So that is going to be my verification part. So now let's start scripting this test case. So before scripting uh, test cases for a page object model design pattern. You should plan how we are going to handle this. So here as we know the pages in the application we are going to segregate into separate Java class and inside each class you will capture all the web elements that you're going to interact with in that particular page and also the corresponding actions that you will be performing on those web elements. You'll write it in separate methods. OK, so now let's get started. Let's um, write separate classes for a search page. This is the search page and login page. So we'll create two Java classes. One is for the search page search page dot Java and capture the web elements that we'll be interacting with. So this web element and the logout link similarly in the login page we'll be interacting with the email password and continue button. So we'll capture those and also the actions that you're going to perform. So let's start now. So here you can see I have two Java class created one is for the login page another one is for the search page now let me start with the login page let me capture all the web elements in the login page that I'm going to interact with so I'm going to use by technique in order to identify my web element so by is a class in selenium so just put by dot and you'll get options so I go by xpath now I'll just enter the xpath over here so the return type of this is also a by variable. So I'll just give a variable name for this email ID. Similarly for password, I'll capture the web element and I'll name it. So now you can see that I've captured the web elements, in the login page. Next, I need to write corresponding actions for those web elements. So I'll be writing um, send keys for email. Password also send keys action and for continue button. I'll do I'll be writing a click action. So let me write separate methods for these actions. So I'll start like so I've just created a method. So before writing my function, I'll just create an object for the driver. So using this object, I will try to find my web element driver dot find element. My web element is email ID and I'm going to perform a send keys action. So I just give dot send keys. And the email that I'm passing here, I'll get it from the user. So I'll get it as a parameter from the user. Whenever user calls this method, he'll just pass the email inside the parameter and this in turn will be used it in here. OK, so similarly, let me create methods for password and continue button. OK, so now I've created methods and uh, I've also captured the web elements for this login page. So let me write the constructor now. So here the reason why I've written a constructor is that I will get the driver instance of this object from the main method. OK, so whenever an object whenever an object of this class is created directly, the constructor gets called and inside the constructor I will pass the driver from the main method and that driver's instance. I will use it in this main in this login class. OK, we already discussed about this in the previous video. I hope you have an idea. So now let's uh, start the search page. Let's capture the elements in the search page. So here we'll be interacting with this uh, button as well as the logout link. So let me capture those using the same by technique. 
So now I've captured the web elements. Next, I need to write methods for the actions that I'm going to do. So first will be the click action on this, and the next will be uh, I need to verify whether this is getting displayed, right? So I will include one more action also just uh, to wait for the page to load. Since I will be navigating from this page to another page, it might it may take some time for the page to load. So I will add a wait method also. So here you can see I've included a method called wait for page to load. So this method will actually wait until more links is present on the search page. So this is a kind of implicit wait that I have mentioned. Uh, next, I'll just write um, my uh, action inside. Click on more options. So I'll say driver dot find element more links dot click. Right. Uh, so next is I need to verify whether logout link is present. So for that, I'll write a method now. So here I'll first identify the logout link. I will say driver dot find element logout link. And then to identify whether that link is present, I have a method in Selenium called is displayed. So I will say is displayed. And then I'll return this value. So here the return type will be a Boolean value for this uh, condition. So it will return either true or false depending upon the logout links presence. So I will return the Boolean value in this method. So whenever user calls this method, he can just verify whether this method returns a true value to confirm whether the logout link is displayed. So that is how it will work. So let me add a constructor also for this uh, class. Again, the reason why I added the constructor is that I'll get the driver instance from the main class and pass it to the object of the driver here. Okay, which in turn will be used in all the functions. So that is the reason I'm creating a constructor wherein I'll get the driver instance from the main class or from the user. So now I'm done with creating separate pages for log separate Java class for my login page and search page. Uh, now let us start writing our test case. So before that, uh, let's look into one more concept. So here we have click continue, right? So when you're clicking on the continue button, you're taken to another page that is this page. So you're uh, you're uh, navigating from one page to another when you're doing this click function. So the return type of this method will become that page search page. So what I'll do basically here is that I'll create an object of this of that particular search page and I'll return it. So with this, what are we trying to understand in every page? You will have a method that will take you to the next page. So in this page we have a method called click continue this is taking us to the next page so the return type of that method automatically becomes the object of the next page so i will be returning the object of the next consecutive page so using this object i can access all the methods inside the second page so that is how it works okay so now let's start writing the test case so i will go to my main class so here i have my driver initiated in uh, using my Chrome driver initiated and then I've passed the URL and then I will also declared a maximum wait time for my wait object and uh, in that after test I've closed the driver the reason why I gave um, a maximum wait time and I've uh, initiated the wait instance is that I'll be using it in uh, the search page over here wherein I'll get the wait instance from the user so that is the reason I put it in the main method over here so now I'll write the test case in this add test method. So let me write the test steps. So what are the test steps? A uh, test steps will be click on, uh, sorry, enter the email, enter the password, and click on continue. So these methods we already have it in another login class. So I should use the methods inside the login class. Type email, type password, and click on continue. So how do we use it? We create an object for that class, and only then we try to access the methods inside it. So let me create the object now. So now I've created the object. Next, I need to use the methods inside it. So using the object, I say dot type email and uh, the email I'll send it from the user. So I'll just pass the email from the main method like this. Similarly, I'll call the password and the click uh, continue button. So here I've called the three methods email, password and continue. But uh, we already discussed that on clicking on continue, it takes us to another new page. So the return type of this method will be 
the object of the next page. So I'm assigning the object to the next page to this method and using this object, I will access the methods inside the next page. So after clicking on continue, I should wait for the page to load. So I use the object and then call the method wait for page to load. Right. Similarly, after that, I need to click on this button. So I already have my methods created wait for page to load click on more options so i will just call the method using the object so search dot click on more options and then i need to assert once i click on more options assert whether logout is displayed so we already have a method wherein it is returning a true or false value so here my job is to just verify whether it is returning a true value so in my test case i'll just say assert for a true value so i'll just say assert dot assert true and then call the boolean condition which is present in that particular method okay so the return type will be asserted whether it is true or false okay so i hope um, this is clear let me run this and show it to you now so I say run as test ng. So now the home page got invoked. It should enter username password and click on continue button. Now uh, login is made. It should verify whether logout is present. Yes, the test case has passed. So now let's look at the rest of the test cases. So here when you have a look at the all the test cases, uh, just read the test steps. It says enter URL, valid username password continue, valid username password continue. So you can see that the first three steps are getting repeated for all the test cases, right? Which means that uh, only after you make a valid login, you can um, proceed with the next steps in your test case. So in order to make our job easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a single method for, for the first three steps. So I will write all the uh, actions that I've split into typing email password and continue into a single method. OK, so let me write a single method now and just add all these actions inside that method. So here you can see that I've created a single method called login and all the actions I have included in this method itself. Typing the email, typing the password and clicking on continue button. OK, so after clicking on continue button, what happens? We are taking to another page. So what do we do when we are taken from one page to another? We return the object of the next page. So here my return type will change to the next page. OK, and uh, what I'll do basically here, I'll create an object of the next page and then return that particular object. So in the previous um, method wherein we click on continue and then we return the object, this happened in one single method. But in the method called login, after clicking on continue button, you are automatically taken to another page. So I am just including the return type of the next page in this method itself. So this method will return me the next page, right? That is the concept. So using this object, I will just try to access the methods inside the other page. Uh, so let us start using this in another test case. So uh, we'll start with the logout test case wherein you need to made, make a successful login and then uh, click on continue button and then click on logout. So once you log out, you should verify whether you have a login button in your login page. So this will be my test case. I will go to my um, search page, make a successful login, click on logout button and after logging out, I will verify whether I have a login link displayed. OK, so here also we are uh, dealing with two pages. One is the login page and another one is the search page. Uh, so here once a login is made, you verify whether this logout button is displayed. Right. So for that, I'm just including a function in the login page to verify whether the button is displayed. So here you can see that I've just uh, added a method and and returning the value, whether it is true or false, depending upon the button displayed or not in that particular page. And I've also added the login web element over here. OK, so next I need to add one more method in my search page wherein I need wherein I have to click the logout link. So here I'll add a method for clicking the logout link. So my logout link is present in the search page over here. So I'll add it in the inside that particular Java class. So here I've added the method for clicking the logout button. And again, when I'm clicking the logout button, what is happening? Uh, it's getting redirected to the login page. So I'm going or I'm uh, getting a traverse from one page to another. So what do we do when we are getting navigated from one page to other? We return the object of the the other page. So 
similarly here i'll return the object of my login page so i'll get an object and i'll just return in this method so using this object i can then uh, access the methods inside my login page so let me write the test case for this in my main class so here is my method test case method and here first i'll create an object for my login page and then make a successful login so i'll be using this method login wherein i I've, i've included all the uh, three actions and then i'll uh, click on log out button and uh, verify whether login is displayed so first i'll create an object for the login class and then using this object i'll call my login method so here i'm just passing the username and password and again in this method when you are clicking on continue button so when you go to this method you see that you have a continue button getting clicked and after that you are returning the object of the next page so in my test case also i need to assign this method to the object of the next page so i have just assigned the object of the next page to this method and using that object i will access the methods inside the next page so i click on more options in the next page more options and then i click on log out link so after this i am getting redirected to login page again wherein i need to verify whether i have a login button displayed so that is what i am doing i am clicking on more options over here and then clicking on log out and after log out what is happening again it is getting navigated to another page so the return type of this method will be my another pages object okay so using this object again i will use my uh, origin my pages method so my method is login dot verify presence of login button so here i will verify whether i get a true or false value depending upon whether the button is displayed or not so i will just assert whether i get a true value so my test case will be assert true of this log using the login object i'm just calling the method verify presence of login button so that's it as simple as that okay i hope you got an understanding so whenever you uh, whenever you have a um, method wherein it takes you from one page to another you should always return the object of the next page okay and then using that object you are free to access the methods inside the next page so that is how it works in page object model design and you should segregate your pages in your application to separate java classes like this and also the methods inside it that you are going to uh, that you are going to perform and uh, your test case will only have the test steps uh, basically so you'll just call the test steps using the or the methods using the uh, classes object and you'll directly write an assertion at the end so that is how page object model works i hope you got an understanding on this um, in the next video we'll be discussing about page object model using page factory method uh, so let's meet in the next session thank you